After conquering every boss and every challenge in the delicious last course, there was one thing on my mind. What does Miss Chalice play like against the existing Cuphead bosses? This question led to the video that you are going to see today, as I took Miss Chalice on a journey through the first three aisles to see how she stacks up against the existing bosses. For this, I decided not only to use Miss Chalice, but also to restrict myself to only using the new types of ammo that were introduced in the DLC. So yo guys, it's Hilaro. you already know that this is what I've learned. I equipped Converge and Twist Up and headed off to the root pack on regular mode to see what the experience is like. And immediately I realized how much easier dash parrying is than the normal parries. I was able to build up a super in literally no time, except for I forgot to change my super, so the one that I had equipped was the one that gave me an extra life, and I clearly didn't need an extra life for this fight. So as expected, I made quick work of the root pack, and I started to suspect that maybe Miss Chalice is easy mode? I also decided that Converge is pretty bad, so I unequipped it and equipped the crack shot instead, which you're going to see a lot of, because it's really good. The fight against Goopy Legrand didn't really feel any different than when you use Cuphead or Bugman. The only difference is you get an extra HP, so I guess technically it's easier, but outside of dashing the question marks, there really isn't any difference. I then decided to bring Miss Chalice into a flying level just to see if there's any noticeable difference in damage, and I couldn't really tell a difference. You have the same attacks that you do when you have Cuphead or Mugman, and the only real difference is that you get an extra HP, so I decided not to really bother with any more of the flying levels after this one. I did a similar thing with running gun levels. I brought Miss Chalice into treetop trouble just to see how she fares, but I didn't really want to play any of the running gun levels, so I didn't play any more after this one. Um, but she does make things a lot easier. Being able to dash some of the parryables, being able to double jump, dodge roll through, having an extra HP. Miss Chalice really just puts the running gun levels on easy mode, which honestly, future me is going to love because I want to get the coins for the running gun levels, but I don't want to have to play the running gun levels, so the faster you get through them, the better. Miss Chalice is definitely the way to go for these. Getting the dash parry timing against Ruby and Croaks did take a little bit of time to get used to, but I feel like if you took that time, it's not that bad, and the rest of the fight plays out pretty similarly as any other time. Cagney Carnation, however, gets significantly easier with both Miss Chalice and the Crack Shot. The crack shot is very good at taking care of the little plants after the seeds fall from the sky, and being able to dash parry the pink seeds falling from the sky is a lot easier than using the normal parry for me. Also having the double jump means that you can jump over all of the obstacles way easier without having to worry about having precise jumps, and this fight is really easy now. So onward to aisle 2, and I decided to start off with Bevy the Clown, and I quickly learned that the crack shot is really good for this fight, as the crack shot prioritizes the ducks above, which makes it so much less likely that you're going to run into them when you double jump and then dash over. As well, it's just also a pretty decent option for taking care of the dog balloons. I also think that dash parrying into the front of the roller coaster is easier than normal parrying. I also think having a double jump during the horse phase was pretty nice and made it feel a little easier. And just in general, Baby the Clown, definitely easier with Miss Chalice. I then decided it was time to go to Candyland and pay a visit to Baroness Von Bonbon. Bon. And I really expected this to be easy, and I was not wrong. As the crack shot is really helpful to take care of the jelly beans on the bottom, it's also pretty easy to dash parry into the pink jelly beans, and it's also fantastic to have a double jump when you have to try and avoid Miss Bon Bon's head. Combine all these things together, and you have a fight that is definitely easier with Miss Chalice. At this point, I was pretty convinced that Miss Chalice is just going to be the answer for every boss in this game, and as I was expecting to steamroll through the rest of this game, I decided to visit Grim Matchstick. Now don't get me wrong, I love this boss, but I learned some things that I was not expecting. First thing I immediately realized is dash parrying into the rings is definitely harder than normal parrying them. The trade-off for this is double jumping over the meteors and over the tail is easier than how you would do it normally. While I would still prefer to use Lobber for the second phase, Crackshot is a solid option. And you would think double jumping over the fireballs would make it easier, but sometimes double jumping would leave you in a spot where you would normally be on the ground and be able to jump again, but you actually fall into a fireball instead. I do think with some jumps it's easier, and some jumps it's not as easy. I think it evens out to be about the same as normal. And here's where I learned the limitations of Crackshot. Did you see that? Crackshot prioritizes the fireballs that Grim Matchstick throws out at you over hitting Grim Matchstick himself. And when you hit the fireballs, it makes them explode into four different directions. So Crackshot is actively going to try and kill you before killing the boss. And the other ammo I came equipped with is the Twist Up that attacks in front of you and up. So I was not in a good situation to deal with this. 
I then decided to come equipped with Lobber and give it another shot. I made it right at the end, but failed, and I figured that was good enough for my research. You do get an extra HP, and if you come into this fight with roundabout, Lobber, and whatever else your ammo of choice is, this is about the same as when you do Cuphead and Mugman, but I would not classify this as easy mode. What I would classify as easy mode is Rumor Honey Bottoms. With a mixture of the crack shot and the double jumps, this fight is so much easier. I still lost once because I'm bad at the game, but I definitely had a better time with this than I usually do. The crack shot really just does what the chaser does and just does it better. And being able to double jump from platform to platform makes it so it's less likely that you're going to miss a platform and die as a result. And again, I think dashing into the parables are easier than doing it the normal way. Werner Worman is fun because when he comes charging at you, you can just double jump and dash over him instead of having to bounce off of the pink bouncy thingies. However, there are definitely some downsides to Miss Chalice in this fight. Double jumping over the bombs sort of threw off my sense of rhythm and sometimes I would land on the ground and get hit by the fire uh, as part of the bomb's after effects. And then also I learned that dashing into a parable can give Miss Chalice height to then get hit by a different obstacle. So that was something. During the second phase, uh, you can dodge roll just as effectively as you can smoke dash, but really there's not that big of a difference. But crack shot was a pretty good way of taking care of the ghost in the final phase without really having to aim. Overall, I probably wouldn't bother bringing Miss Chalice into this fight if you want to be able to parry anything effectively, and I would just bring smoke dash and do things that way. So Miss Chalice, definitely not easy mode here. Sally's stage play gave me a rough time because I forgot that you're supposed to dodge obstacles and not run into them. But generally, I would say that Miss Chalice is a little bit easier, with the crack shot being able to do damage without having to focus on Sally stage play at all, and you can just focus on dodging the obstacles, as well as being able to double jump over the wave and over the umbrella at the end. I would say that Miss Chalice makes this fight slightly easier, but it's really not that different from normal. I then decided it was Ghost Train time, and I had a pretty interesting experience here. Crackshot generally did a pretty good job of dealing with the eyeballs in the first phase, and dash parrying the bricks falling from above is definitely easier than trying to normal parry them. I think I've basically learned that it's just easier to dash parry anything that's falling from above, whereas if something's on the ground, it's basically just preference. I do think dash parrying put me in the hitbox for the skeleton in the second phase, but that only happened one time, so I don't know if that happens a lot. Once again, Crackshot proved to be the MVP as it was really good at taking care of any small obstacles that would show up on screen, whether it be the pumpkins or the ghosts. It's also pretty good at aiming at the weak spot in the final phase, so you can focus on dodging obstacles while Crackshot is doing some damage for you. I don't know that the double jump really helped anything, and even though it took me a couple tries because I'm bad at the game, I would say that Miss Chalice does make this fight a little bit easier. So with all the bosses taken care of, I decided it's time to go hit up Mr. King Dice himself and see how this fight goes with Miss Chalice. I decided I was going to fight every mini boss except for the monkey because it's a plain one and I didn't need to bother. And yes, there is a second plain one, but I forgot about that until after I already landed on the number. So whoops. For the first fight, the crack shot is good at prioritizing taking out the olives, so there's less small things that you can run into on screen, but everything else about the fight is the same as if you had somebody else. The one major advantage that Miss Chalice gives you is that you get to start with an extra HP, and during the King Dice fights, you can get more HP, so you can, I think, end up challenging King Dice with like 7 HP if you do it this way, which is like insane. In fight number two, I finally did it. I found a use for the dodge roll. That's right, Miss Chalice has a dodge roll that I basically never use, but against this boss, it was pretty good. Although something to note is that sometimes the crack shot wouldn't actually aim for the hitbox unless you were facing away from him, and I don't really know why that's the case, but that was something that I learned pretty quickly. But this fight's pretty easy no matter who you use, so it's on to the next one. Cigar Man was a struggle because I'm bad at video games, but I would say being able to double jump makes it easier to maneuver around the cigarettes in the middle when you're jumping from side to side. The Domino fight wasn't much different. The only thing of note is that unlike other fights, the crack shot really only focused on the boss and really didn't bother focusing in on the small domino obstacle that would come flying at you from time to time. I guess double jumping means that you have more room for error when you're jumping over the floor spikes, but it's not that different of a fight. Next up is the rabbit in the hat, and uh, this was actually kind of difficult for me, more than I remembered. I really couldn't figure out a way uh, to dodge the obstacles that would come from above. If they came from below, I could dodge roll, and if it was the other one where they circle around you, you can dodge roll through that as well. But the obstacles that came from above, I never really found a great way to deal with that. If you time it perfectly, I think you can dodge roll through. You may be able to dash the parryable ones, 
but it definitely seems less safer than if you just have a normal parry. This is the time when I took on the horse boss and won without getting hit. It's not really relevant to the video, but I just want to show that I'm not always bad at video games, and this is also just being used to cover up for the fact that this is the third or fourth run through of the King Dice mini bosses that I was doing because I kept dying, but pretend you didn't hear that. In theory, Poker Chip Ballerina Lady should be easier, but that wasn't really my experience. You can dash the Poker Chips to use them as platforms. You can dodge roll through her under, you can double jump over. But something about the variety of options just sort of threw off my rhythm as I'm very used to just jumping up once, smoke dashing through, using the normal parry to parry at, on a platform that I'm just going to land on, and uh, having Miss Chalice sort of threw off that rhythm and made this a little bit harder for me for some reason. But then the only one left is the 8-ball, and as long as you don't get hit by like the two obstacles on screen that move very slowly, you're fine. But it was at this moment that I realized that it's time to fight King Dice himself, and um... He's kind of set up in a way that you're supposed to just be able to jump parry on the cards and then jump from card to card. Is this impossible? No, no it's not. It's actually pretty easy to dash into the cards and also King Dice's face does not have a hitbox so you can do that as many times as you please and it's uh, actually pretty easy. And now it's on to the devil himself. Crackshot does a fantastic job in this fight. It's also way easier to dash into the parryables than it is to do it the normal way. And I basically orgasmed on the spot when I realized that I could double jump over the arm attack. Even though I don't do deals with the devil, I will do a deal with Miss Chalice. Every single time, she makes this fight easy mode. So that's it. That's all the bosses. I learned that Miss Chalice is in fact easy mode for most of the bosses outside of a couple of them. What? What do you mean I forgot a boss? No, no, I didn't forget a boss. I wouldn't forget. Captain Brownie Beard is easy as expected as you can dash into the parables in the air. You can double jump over the ground obstacles. Crackshot does a great job of doing damage while you focus on dodging, and of course you get an extra HP on top of all that. And I was even able to make use of the dodge roll. So to answer the question, is Miss Chalice easy mode? The answer is yes. Except for Warner Woman, and maybe Grim Matchstick. And that could be the end of the video, but I wasn't quite satisfied. I needed to know, what about expert mode? I'll throw some footage on screen, I'm not going to go through every fight that I did and didn't try and which ones were and weren't successful. But essentially, you get an extra HP buffer without having to have your weapons do less damage, and with the extra HP, you can still take a hit and still get an S-Rank. So whether you're just looking to beat Expert Mode or get those S-Ranks, it's definitely easier with Miss Chalice in almost every situation. Well, that wraps it up. I hope this video was both informative and entertaining. If so, let me know by leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe for future videos, including one where I am going to be ranking all of the Cuphead bosses. I hope to see you somewhere in the future, so until then, Peace out.